cell freezing and banking. Whilst in culture, cells are subjected to various selection pressures, which can lead to instability and drift in the cell's genotype and phenotype. Prolonged culture also puts the cells at risk from contamination. Continual cell culture should be avoided to ensure that cells are used in a validated passage window. Cryopreserved cell banks should be produced to a master and working cell bank regime in which a well-characterized master cell bank or MCB is produced. This master cell bank may be in the order of 50 to 200 or more ampoules. One master cell bank vial will then be resuscitated to generate a working cell bank or WCB. Cultures will then be generated from the working cell bank to provide cells at the required passage. Once a working cell bank is exhausted, a new working bank can be produced from the master cell bank. Careful planning and selection of the right bank size will enable cell stocks to be available for an extended and often in practical terms indefinite period. Cells have to be frozen in very controlled conditions. A cryoprotectant such as dimethyl sulfoxide or DMSO must be added to stop the cells from becoming destroyed by ice crystals as they form in the freezing process. For a successful cryopreservation to take place, the temperature of the cells must be reduced slowly by a rate of around 1 degree centigrade per minute to minus 80 degrees centigrade. Then the cooling can be accelerated and the cells can then be stored indefinitely at liquid nitrogen temperatures at around minus 190 degrees centigrade. For long-term storage to be effective, the cells must be stored below minus 138 degrees centigrade, as above this temperature, tiny pockets of liquid water can still be present, allowing potentially damaging chemical reactions to occur, albeit very slowly. DMSO acts as an antifreeze. It permeates the cells and allows water to escape from them. Slowly, as the cells freeze, they become dehydrated and therefore escape the damaging action of ice crystal formation. Cryopreserving a cell line. Prepare the cryoprotective or freeze medium. Typically, this will be a mix of cultivation medium, fresh or conditioned, and fetal bovine serum or FBS, at an appropriate concentration supplemented with 10% DMSO. At the European Collection of Cell Cultures, the standard cryoprotectant mix used is 90% FBS plus 10% DMSO. Serum-free adapted cell lines are often cryopreserved in conditioned growth media, or a non-serum-based supplement such as methyl cellulose, with 10% DMSO. Prepare a cell suspension by following the procedure for subculture. Perform a cell count. Determine the cell count and viability. Only proceed to cryopreservation if the viability is high. You should have also confirmed that the cells are in log phase growth using growth curve data. A word of caution. Cells that have entered plateau phase may still have a high viability. However, apoptosis may have started. This will make resuscitation after storage very difficult. Pellet the cells by centrifugation at 100 G for five minutes. Anchorage independent or suspension cells should be processed from this point forward. Decant or aspirate the supernatant from the centrifuge tube. Resuspend the cells in pre-chilled freeze medium at the desired cell concentration. Typically, two to five million cells will be frozen in one milliliter aliquots. However, some applications may require higher cell numbers and larger volumes. It is essential that purpose-made cryovials are used. Keep the vials chilled and quickly transfer to a rate-controlled freezing apparatus. This may be a purpose-made rate-controlled freezer, an isopropyl alcohol bath, such as Nalgene, Mr. Frosty, or even an insulated polystyrene container. The Mr. Frosty or polystyrene container should be transferred to a minus 80 degrees centigrade freezer and left overnight. Avoid opening the freezer during this period. 
The next day, the frozen ampoules should then be moved to vapour phase liquid nitrogen storage. The vial storage locations should be recorded in a controlled logbook. Section 9. 